Hello and welcome to episode 4 in this series exploring the many powerful features of HitFilm, the free non-linear editor from FX Home. Today I want to demonstrate how to create simple animated lower thirds. I dealt with lower thirds in episode 3, but the example I gave was a static one. Sometimes all you need is a static lower third. They're easy and quick to create. On the other hand, an animated lower third can add extra effect to a video, and a simple one doesn't take much time to create. I'll assume that you're familiar with the HitFilm user interface, and are up to speed with basic timeline editing. If you're not, I suggest that you check out episodes 1 to 3 before proceeding any further. If you are, let's get started. To create animated lower thirds, a working knowledge of keyframe animation is required. So for the benefit of the newcomer to keyframe animation, I'll give a brief explanation. Wikipedia defines a keyframe as a frame used to indicate the beginning or end of a change to a parameter. If we expand that definition and apply it to a non-linear editor such as ItFilm, we can say that a keyframe is a particular frame of a media event where certain parameters of that media event are made to change their value. Two or more keyframes can be used to cause a particular parameter to change over time, resulting in animation. A media event can be a piece of video from a camera or a piece of video that's generated within the NLE, such as a title, or, as I'll be concentrating on in this tutorial, a lower third. For the purposes of this tutorial, I've imported three short video clips, trimmed them and loaded them onto the timeline. The total length is only 21 seconds, but it's long enough for this demonstration. I mentioned in episode 3 that lower thirds should ideally be no longer than about 6 seconds. This allows 1 second for a transition at either end and 4 seconds for the viewer to read the descriptive text. I'll make a start by creating a text media event. By the way, in this series I'll refer to anything on the timeline as a media event. In the case of a lower third, the simplest way of creating a text media event is to place the playhead at a suitable point on the timeline, then select the text icon and start typing. I want the lower third to occur about the middle of the combined media events, so I'll place the playhead at the 8 second mark. With the playhead in position, I'll select the text tool and start typing. You can see that as soon as I start typing, another video track has been created and the text media event has been placed on it starting at the playhead. I'll now format the text string. I described this briefly in episode 3.
Now to make the text stand out a little from the background I'm going to give it an outline. I do this by clicking the plus icon labelled Outline. This opens up the Outline attributes and enables the outline. The default colour is red, which is not what I want. I want it to be black. So I'll click on the colour swatch and choose black. The thickness seems about right at 4. The next thing I want to do is place the text string at a suitable lower third position. Where this suitable position is will depend upon the content of the scene you're describing. In this case there's a nice expanse of grass, so the text won't be obscuring any important area of the scene. I'll just drag it down to the lower part of the frame. This is where I want the text to be when it's between the two animations. I refer to these animations as the intro, that's the first one, and the outro, the second one. Now for the animation. In this simple example I want the text to initially be off frame to the left. The animation will start moving the text string on frame until it stops. After 4 seconds the outro animation will start and move the text back off frame to the left. With the text event selected and the controls panel open you will see a section labelled Transform. Amongst other parameters this contains one that controls the position of the text string. At the side of the position parameter you can see a hollow circle. Whenever you see a hollow circle such as this at the side of a parameter label it means that that particular parameter can be animated with keyframes. To enable keyframe animation for a parameter this hollow circle must be enabled by selection. When selected it will be highlighted to indicate that it's enabled. It will also have a dot in the middle, indicating that the playhead is on a keyframe. You will also notice that a series of six icons above the editor timescale have become highlighted. These are icons that control how keyframes behave and are beyond the scope of this simple tutorial. They will be dealt with in many future tutorials. An important thing to remember about keyframe enable icons. Once enabled, selecting it afterwards will result in any keyframes created for that parameter since it was enabled being deleted. Be careful. This can cause a lot of wasted time and effort. So, having enabled position keyframing, I can make a start. At the start of the text event I want the text string to be off frame to the left. With the playhead at the start of the event and the text event selected I'll grab the on-screen control red arrowhead and pull it back off frame until the text completely disappears. Make sure you select the arrowhead to ensure that movement is purely horizontal. I want the animation to last one second, so I'll move the playhead to the 9 second position. At this point I want the text to be on frame in a suitable position, so I'll again do this by grabbing the red arrowhead 
You'll need to zoom out a little to do this. You will notice that moving the text has created another keyframe automatically. Now to move the playhead to the 13 second position. This time, because the position hasn't changed, I need to create a keyframe manually. I do this by clicking the toggle keyframe icon. Now to complete with the outro. I'll move the playhead to the end of the event, then move the text off frame. You see now there's a problem. Because the playhead is at the end of the event, the text isn't being shown on the viewer. What I have to do is move the playhead back one frame using the previous frame icon in the viewer. Now with the text visible again, I can move it off frame which will create a keyframe automatically. I'll wait for caching to complete, then play the lower third. Designing and creating your own animated lower thirds is very satisfying. Sometimes though, you need to create one quickly. That's when the installed templates come in handy. There are several pre-designed lower thirds in template form, which can be applied to the timeline very quickly. When on the timeline, they can be customised, to a certain extent, to suit your requirement. You access the installed templates by opening the media panel and selecting the templates icon. A list of the installed templates is then displayed. For this demonstration, I'm going to select the template labeled Super Simple. The two buttons Edit and Import then become enabled. Because I don't want to make fundamental changes to the design of the template, I'll choose Import. As you can see, the template has been imported into the media panel. The icon at the top right of the entry shows that it's a composite shot template. I'll be exploring composite shots in a later tutorial. To use it, I simply drag it across to the timeline and place it at a convenient point. I'll wait for cash in, then play the template.
As it is, the text strings in the template are the default ones. All the installed templates have some elements that are variable. This means that they can be modified without having to edit the composite shot template. In the case of lower thirds, these elements, among some others, are the text strings. To modify the text strings, go to the controls panel and, with the template selected, scroll down until you see the labels title and subtitle. Now click on the title label. This highlights the text string Harry Potter in the viewer ready for modifying. I'll do the same for the subtitle. Now, there's a problem when you use an installed template. The duration is fixed, as is the animation. In normal use, it's not possible to increase the duration, and if you decrease it, the animations may be affected. Having said that, if you have a working knowledge of composite shot construction and keyframe manipulation, it is possible to change the duration. I'll leave this for a much later tutorial. So you can see that it's fairly easy to create a simple animated lower third. With practice, you can use keyframes to animate many of the lower third's parameters. Text can be made to expand or contract, for example, or rotate. You can use one of the installed templates if you want a more sophisticated lower third. Be aware though that changing the default length of an installed template is no easy task. Join me for the next episode when I'll be demonstrating how to stabilise your not-so-steady video. Until then, bye for now.